Hey, everybody. I am Nick. I'm Mike. And I'm Steph. Yeah. Uh, we are, I was, was going to say, we are that. I was like, you'll think of a name. We're the Three Musketeers. We established this last oh, time. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> no, 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 I'm sorry. The Three Amigos. Oh, that's yeah, right. We're the Three, three amigos. amigos. That's what three it is. Amigos. I was like, but I say, we're the Three. And I was just like, you didn't, <laughs> we you didn't give yourself time to think of something People here. People on right. the internet. We're the Three Amigos of board gaming. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But here is another uh, top 10 verse 10 where we make a collective top 10 and we go straight head to head with your top 10. And what that means is we look up a certain mechanic or a theme or something like that and then look at the top 10 ranked games in that category on BGG. So the people's list, I suppose, right? And then we uh, compare that to our list. And it's just a, a fun, a fun little thing. Exactly. So, uh, Nick and I and Steph have, have combined our brain power and the fact that Steph actually plays games uh, <laughs> to helps. come up with a top 10 between us. Uh, and we're going to put that against uh, the uh, the list of Board Game Geek. And Steph, what, you, what category are we even doing today, Steph? We're doing my favorite category, which is Roll and Rights. Bam. <laughs> we're also a big fan. So there's already 17 comments being like, I hate Instant Roll Instant downvote. End of video. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's like, I get it. That's fine. Because Roll Rights, we talked about this a little bit before we started recording, that Roll Rights, a lot of people just straight up don't like them at all. <laughs> and I, it's such a confusing concept. because People they're so, are allergic to fun. They're so easy and simple and quick. Like, I just don't get... I think they're a perfect filler, you know? I mean, just, uh, you know, you have 15 minutes before the other table breaks up, just play a filler. The quick. That's yeah. what I'm saying. There are so many of them that you can play so quickly, and it's a fun, light little puzzle thing to keep your brain engaged. Like you said, at a game night, not everyone's finishing games at the same time. I can't think of a better genre to fill that exact need. Yeah. And one that, especially, you can teach it easily to people. So, and a lot of them you can play them. with an infinite amount of people Which as nice. long as you have enough sheets for people to write yeah. on. So you're like, oh, we have 15 people. Okay, let's all play a big game of whatever. And we actually we live stream a lot and we play roll and rights with our chat a lot yeah, because awesome. as long as they have the sheet, we can be like running the game and everyone at home can be playing along with us. So we love roll and rights. All about it. Um, so you we must have, have a awesome laminator, games. right? Because this is why I bought a laminator. We, we, we do. actually do have a laminator for that exact reason. <laughs> we yes. do. Yeah. We definitely do. And I like the trend of seeing rolling rights, newer rolling rights are often dry erase. So let's keep that going. Yes. We don't have to yes. laminate. We can just laminate for only for fun, which is good it's and true. exciting. That and I'm is. proud that I said that I laminate for fun. Yeah. Uh, okay. So with that messiness out of the way, let's go ahead and start this list with uh, BGG's pick for number 10, rolling right. So your number 10, BGG's number 10, is Castles of Burgundy, the dice game. Mm. This actually, for us, weirdly enough, was the first rolling right we ever played. Indeed. Really? And we played yeah. this before Castles what? of Burgundy. Yeah. What? <laughs> I know, right? Oh my right? god. Steph, we just what don't do news? things in a in a reasonable way. That's not we've never <laughs> right. done it that way. Oh my yeah. goodness. But uh wow. yeah, Castles of Burgundy, the dice game is an implementation of Castles of Burgundy with Dice, yes. <laughs> uh, and uh, it, it, I don't know, Steph. What do you think? The thing I like about Castle of Burgundy, the dice game, is I feel now that we have we have played Castle of Burgundy at this point. Okay, and good. I feel like Jeez. it really does Garbage. feel like Castles moment. of Burgundy in yeah. you know a simplified way. Yeah, it does. It feels like a very small one. So, what do you think, Steph? You like this one? Um, yeah, I would just always rather play the real game, though. I mean, so the, what my major issue with the dice game is that it just goes on for too long. For me, it was like a 45 short. minute game. And that's just, for me, a roll and write should not be 45 minutes unless there's a lot of depth. And mm. so if I'm going to get into a 45 minute game, I'd rather just play an additional half hour, the full, you know, Castle Burgundy game, which I love very much. Yeah, because Castle Burgundy, especially if you're playing like two player, is pretty, pretty snappy. fast on its own. I mean, it's half hour, it's an, 45 minutes tops. Yeah, for just a two-player, I would agree that it's 45 minutes. Yeah, it, yeah. And I would just rather play that. I mean, there's a lot more decisions happening. and But for a dice game, it's nice to have a travel edition, so I can see where there's benefits That's, here. Yeah. And especially, like, because there's, like, also Castle Burgundy, Burgundy, the card game. Uh, which is which good. Is, in the exact same yeah, box as the dice game, and it's very confusing because they look exactly the same. They look exactly but the same. The, di the card game is great, but it actually has a pretty big footprint yeah. on the table. And so if you want a Castle Burgundy feel, but you want it to be legitimately very small, 
I re we both really like the dice game. Yeah, a lot. we play the Castle of the Burgundy uh, dice game on planes all the time because yeah. we just roll them in the tray. So it's great yeah. for that kind of use. It's our it's our plane game. Yeah. For the most oh part. my goodness. And then on a plane, you have like forty five minutes or more. So it's like I don't mind playing a longer roll and write in course. that sense. That know? that's a great that's a great opportunity to play dice games. I do that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Indeed, they fit well. All righty. So number ten, your top, your number ten. I do that every time. So your whole top ten is number ten. <laughs> Once again, uh, we're done. Wrap hey, it up. Quick. Wrap it up. Uh, your number ten. <laughs> Castles Burning the Dice game. Good pick, people. Greg. Um, well, well struck. <laughs> so let's move on to our number 10. Our number 10 is Quick's Big Points. Now, we will talk a little bit later about Quick's, probably, maybe. maybe. But Big Points is special to me because it has all the awesomeness of Quick's with a few extra rules. Like big points. Like big points. You get really big points. And who doesn't <laughs> like more points in a game, right? True, so, true. So quicks, the way quicks works, just briefly, is you're working in columns and, and you'll be drafting, not drafting, but the active player will roll six dice, the four mm. colors, and two white dice. And what you're mm. trying to do is lock these different rows. So yellow, red, blue, and green. Um, and then the game will end once two rows have been locked. If a row is locked, the die is removed. So if the blue uh, row is locked, you remove that blue die. Nobody can use that blue row anymore. Okay, so, so it's kind of a race to, to be the first one to complete these areas before anyone yes, else can. Okay. But the catch is um, you need a certain number of X's in each row before you can lock it. And the more X's you get in each row, the more points you'll get. Now, oh. what, what big points does mm is it adds a combination box, little bubble between the two rows. So if you, if I, let's say I, I checked off the blue 11 and I got another blue 11. Well, that, bo that box was already checked, so I can't check it. However, in big points, now I have a, this optional check, which I can do. Hmm. So nice. it gets me more points for blue and green because it's a shared bubble. So huh. I can get like a whole lot more X's and a whole lot more points for the different colors. Okay. So I suppose, I know you guys haven't played quick, so I suppose I should mention yeah, once you once games. you go into the line, so let's say it goes blue with 12, 11, 10. If I mark off the blue 10, I can no longer take the 12 or 11. That's locked for me. Oh, okay, I see. So okay. that's the catch okay. between, so if I go all the way to three and I haven't marked anything, well, I'm just, <laughs> Yeah, that's, I, yeah, I just, right? <laughs> that's bad. You're winning. Okay, cool. So you're you kind of you have to manage it properly, basically. And okay. you know, do I that take the seven smart. now, or do I think somebody else will roll a seven later, or maybe wait for an eight kind of thing? Yeah. So, because you know, dice. <laughs> because of dice, yeah. They don't. I don't get along with them at all. I right. don't like them. Yeah. Right, so you, you guys need 10? to play quicks when it comes. Out. I know we it's, it's, it's one of those games. Like, how to do it? Not, you know, but <laughs> we'll do it. It's gonna you know, happen. Do it. We're, We're always trying to play stuff. the whole genre. We're gonna do it. That's right. I promise. Cool. At some point. Cool. So that's our number ten quicks big points. Let's go on to your BGGs number nine. So on to more games that Mike and I haven't played. Your number nine <laughs> is a game called. Encore, or it's Knock Mall. It's also Knock Mall. Yes. Brava, so bravissima. Most Encore. people will know it by Knock Mall. <laughs> Encore is a the U.S. printing that's coming, I believe, from Stronghold. So you can look for that oh. soon. But Knock Mall oh. is came out several years ago, I think now, and so there's been additional sheets added and all these different things. But what you're trying to do is fill in this grid of colors and numbers, and so. You're going to be rolling dice and people can also, it kind of works a little bit like quicks, but you're filling in this grid of colors. And so you're trying to fill nice. columns and, and rows and get points and all this good stuff. And you get to mark off lots of X's. Boop, boop, boop. So it's, it's still like that seems very much in the, the classic sense of roll and rights where they were kind of these number colorful filling in rows and columns. The encore kind of follows in that tradition, I suppose. Um, yeah. I, I'm to trying degree. to think. Yeah, I'm trying to think of other really good. So a, a, another roll and write that came out last year was Tag City, which I think does it a little bit better and more mainstream, easier to to use. But 
Um, again, that's not available in the US either. So Encore will be your best option for this there kind of game. Get Encore. <laughs> Encore does good enough. Uh, it's good enough to be number nine on, no, on board it, game it's, not it's good. Horrible. I recommend not playing it with five because it will just drag on. Like I said with Castle Burgundy, if you play with too many people, it will just go on for a little bit long. So Keep them snappy. Snappy, yeah, snappy. exactly. Oh, All right, can, well that, yeah, sorry, I was just I was gonna say, you can play it on um, Brechtfieldveld to get a feel for it. Okay. Oh, so. Cool, cool. Excellent. Yeah. We'll check it out if that sounds interesting to you, but it is number nine from the folks of Board Game Geek. But let's get into our number nine. Woohoo! So number nine from the three amigos is Metro <laughs> X, uh, which is another game that's not really readily available no. here. No. It's, it's like maybe so good. Game. I love it so much. So this game is very hard to get, which means we've played it and we haven't played Quits, which is very <laughs> The one that's at Target or whatever, yeah. You guys make no sense it. to me. I know. We're board game hipsters. You're like, We're if anomalies, anyone, if, man. If people can get it, I'm just like, no, son, I'm not interested. I am totally a board game hipster. <laughs> Uh, so in Metro X, you are trying to complete like subway routes yeah. um, by uh, flipping over cards, and the cards will have a, a value on there three, four, whatever. Like six at the top, yeah. Yeah, and if you um, when you get that card, you're going to choose one of the routes uh, to assign that number to, and then based on that number, if it's four, you get to circle off or X off four spaces down a certain. Uh, one of your subway routes, yep. but it starts to get tricky because the routes will cross at various points as, as different subways stations, do. like they really do. But the problem is, if I've worked on this one uh, route and basically x off a bunch of spaces, then I'm working on another route and I come up to an area where they cross and an x is already filled in, I have to stop. Yes. And so the, you try to be really efficient in the game mm -hmm. because I don't want to like get a five, but I only have one free space before that cross point that's already been filled in, and you then can't lose hop all those. over the other route. Right. There's certain to cards stop. that allow yeah. you to do that, but you you don't have many options. So it's just this really tight game of trying to find ways to make those cross points uh, work in your favor instead of against you. Uh, and it's just super fun and, I don't know, super agonizing stuff. What do you yeah. think of Metro X? You seem to like I it. I love it, love it, love it. Um, it is tricky to teach because people don't quite understand the stopping point. It is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> um, I can't so skip. I usually... Well, if there's a skip, you can see it. But if you don't have a skip, you can't skip. And you're like, what? Skip. And like, What's yeah. the star? <laughs> skip. If you don't skip, you don't, if you skip, you can't skip. You're going you're to skip yeah. out of here. But this is what I going? usually have to play twice because the first game is just like, oh, I screwed that up. Maybe yeah, totally. Play again. <laughs> About halfway through, I think your first play, you're like, oh, yeah. I see. I see yeah. now how I've met. And it's usually you're like, I've messed up a lot of things. And then you play again and you're still just like, I still suck I at this. I thought I knew what I was doing. Like, yeah. I know what to do. And then, but, I'm but what's still cool bad. is that there's different maps and now there's even I know. Like a, a little expansion with more maps. So that's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope this gets picked up and, and comes US side um, yeah. it, because it's really, really good. And we were lucky enough to get it uh, through a friend. And so, but if you see Metro X, give it a shot because it's super, super fun. Yeah, Very it's hard. Though. Fun and heartbreaking, agonizing. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I guess flip and fill in this case, uh, yeah. roll and right game. So do check out Metro X. That is our, the three amigos, number nine. So let's get into Board Game Geeks, number eight. Eight. <laughs> So your number eight is a game called Quinto, yes. which we've played. So Steph, why don't you talk about it? <laughs> yeah, you, we played, but you explain it and then we'll tell you. We'll and then tell we'll you, tell you yeah. if you're right. <laughs> oh yeah? Okay. Yeah, just, just check your homework. This is um, a line, a game sort of like Quix. And if you're familiar with Quix, it'll be familiar because you're trying to fill in these rows, except this time you can fill in um, any bubble on the map. So oh. you're trying to, on your turn, you get to choose between rolling one, two, or three dice in three different colors. And depending on the dice that you choose to roll, you have to put into the, the different row. So if I roll all three dice, I can choose which row to put it in. If I roll okay. just the purple die, I have to put it in the purple row. Okay. Now, everybody has the opportunity to use the value of the dice in the rows that they want. Now, the trick is you're trying to fill in your rows and line up columns on the different rows. Oh, okay. Okay. But the stacking numbers can't be the same. So if I put a nine in one spot, I can't put a nine in another spot or the other spot. So you have to try and manage your board appropriately and get points for the circles and the, the rows. So if I completely fill my purple row, the final number in that row will be my score. If I don't fill in the purple row, I get one point per number I've written in the purple row. 
So mm. you're just trying to get the most points uh, for your columns, the, the, the circled spot, and each row. And it's very fast, and everybody I taught loves this game. So... All right. It sounds interesting because on its surface, it seems like, oh, it's it's free and flexible. You can put those things, those numbers anywhere, but then you start to, you lock yourself yeah. into... Yeah, I put the know, 14 point. here, so I can't put it there. Or yeah, what's exactly. the likelihood I'm going to get a 15? Should I put the 14 at the end? Or should I try and hold out for three sixes and 18? Yeah, that's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I really like that. I enjoy that, you know, to a degree. It's like, well, you... you you made your bed. Well, it's kind of like Sudoku is very popular. It's kind of that way. It's like, okay, well, since I already have a four in this row, I can't put that one here. Or, you know, it's yeah. it's like that. And that's a very common thing amongst roll and rights. It's kind of like, well, you already put something here, so now you can't put it mm -hmm. here. And and I think that that sings to a lot of people. Yeah. That su seems super cool. So uh, that is Quinto, uh, number eight. Yeah. From the good old folks of Board Game Geek. That's you people. <laughs> but we have a number eight, and it's coming right now. <laughs> number eight is Rolling Japan, another Akazu brand mm -hmm. game, just like Metro X. Um, another very punishing game, if you, if you, if you will. Good. Oh my goodness. This was really the game that just like brought me into the Roll and Write world. I'm like, oh my God, I love this game so much. <laughs> um, so what happens is there, there's each round, you're going to pull two dice, two dice, two dice out of seven dice. So you're gonna see three combinations of two dice each. Each time two dice are rolled, every player at the table must take these values and put them in boxes on a map that looks like Japan. And mm. so there, this out. game actually got picked up for America, which got turned into an America map called Rolling America, which is in Target yep. and stuff. So uh, you're filling in these areas in the map, but every space needs to be adjacent to a uh, every number you put in has to be adjacent to a number of equivalent value or plus or minus one and sixes don't roll over to one so mm. you just kind of have to put your sixes in the corner and hope for the best and then <laughs> you don't want you can't okay. put threes near sixes at all because you need fives and fours in between and, and and everything's really clumped and you're like i can do it i can do it and then you really just can't <laughs> you can't you do can't. it you just can't you just can't <laughs> Um, yeah, I think most good rolling rights are built on that. You're like, I think I should be able to do this, and I want to, you but you can't. You, won't. you, you just could, can't. but you won't. Afraid not. If I roll perfectly, I'll do it. I'll do it. I promise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, every... Yeah, the bait. <laughs> yeah. If I roll these seven exact things, I'll be fine. It's yeah, be great. that's every rolling right. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny because the stakes are relatively low in a rolling right, so you can do that. But if you're in Caesar's Palace and you have that same mentality, which does happen, yeah, that's how you lose your house. <laughs> I could get it back. I could get it. Just need seven rolls in a row, <laughs> so tens true. all the way. If I just Let's get go. Blackjacks in a row. Everything will be fine. <laughs> yeah, it's just like <laughs> that's not how it works. <laughs> So it's really uh, cool, and every space you don't fill in at the end of the game is minus one. <laughs> You're not getting brutal. positive points in this game. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to look at the Target website to try to find Rolling America, because I want the pain that yeah. this game oh seems like goodness. it's going to promise. And, hey, with Rolling America, it's a little bit nicer, because they offer um, a few abilities. So you can oh. guard space um, or duplicate a number, which is really nice. So if okay. you roll something nice, you can be like, oh, I'm going to just duplicate that and put in a couple times in your board. I'm in. Slightly less punishing. Slightly less punishing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not not punishing. I like rolling rice for being so quick and light. They can hurt a lot. Yeah. They pack, they pack, a, lot they pack a lot of pain into a very short amount of time. Yes, they do. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that is our number eight. Yes. I hope. Good job. Yes. Let's go ahead. <laughs> yes, I can count. Uh, let's go into number seven from you, the folks at Board Game Geek. We're professional. Yeah. All right, your number seven is Railroad Inc. Blazing Red Edition. Specifically, the Blazing Red Edition, not the well, Blue Edition. Well, yeah, red blue. is better, right? I mean, that's a better color. Have you played red? I, I have not. I, we haven't played. We, we have oh. blue. We have and blue. Love blue. And the reason is, is because when I was at Gen Con, <laughs> I saw the blue covered. The blue was a more appealing color to me, and I got it. I yeah, didn't know 100%. what blue did. 
<laughs> yeah, so uh, we have Railroad Inc. Is, is a game where you are making railroads and highways. You're so it should be Railroad slash Highway Inc., but whatever. Yeah. Um, and so you are making railways, you're rolling out dice, and the dice will have routes on them. And then everyone has to put whatever forward faces come up into their map. Somewhere. Somewhere in their map. And you're essentially trying to connect your networks of highways and railroads to the edges of the board in specific spots. So like this spot over here is like a railway exit. So if you have a exit that goes to that one, you will get a certain amount of points. The more exits you connect, the more points you're going to get. Yeah. And, you, and of course, you're at the mercy of what dice come up. So mm -hmm. this is the game so much you're like, I just need, I need four T's. Two railroads, two highways, nothing else. And then you get a bunch of just like curves. Yeah. And you're like, cool, that's 100% what I didn't yeah. need. Oh man, it hurts, it hurts. And then on top of that, there's Blazing Red Edition, there's Blue Edition, and right. they each have uh, two little mini expansions. Yeah, yeah, so Steph, do you have red? Did you, because we yeah. know you like red, and, and what <laughs> is like the expansion, red. what's the blazing part of Blazing Red? It's, well, I think there's a couple, but I've only played the lava, so there's lava okay. that's bluing from these different volcanoes that get placed as you awesome. go. Awesome, fair, so. <laughs> fair. Good. I, As, I usually just play the base game because I'm teaching people, but I, I did get to try right. one of the lava games, so that was cool. Yeah, just keep it to the base, but I like that they give you the option and that red and blue have slightly different variations on their expansions, yeah. uh, including lava. And if you like the color red, if you're like Steph, I don't get it, but it's fine. Uh, I'm just saying that the blue has a certain appeal. Uh, that cover is nice for Railroad Inc., um, but Railroad Inc., red... Yeah, Blazing Red is it's your number seven. Number seven from you. But uh, let's get into our number seven. So the three amigos, number seven, is Lanterns. Dice. The new dice the game. The new dice implementation of the game, Lanterns. Uh, in this game, you are rolling these four dice that will settle into this kind of cool cup deal that will kind of resemble the tiles in Lanterns where you have four sides and you can, can then turn the, uh, the sides into different directions. And basically, whoever's sitting at the table, whatever color is pointing to you is the color you get to use. And then based on whatever color you get, you're going to go down onto a little map that you're building and you're going to cross off a little colored triangle. And then you're trying to make these kind of polyominal shapes in the water to then be able to launch off fireworks. You're kind of trying to do all these things. It's kind of a really fun puzzle yes. that feels very lanterns-y. And I feel like it's actually a little bit heavier and harder than lanterns because of the puzzly nature of crossing off these colored uh, triangles, which there are many of each color. So you can choose where mm -hmm. and how you cross those off, but ultimately you kind of want to get those shapes and stuff. Yeah. So but what nice, do y'all think about lanterns? I, I like it because it's got that same lanterns feel, kind of like Castle Burgundy, the dice game, feels kind of like a smaller version of Castle Burgundy. It, it feels like lanterns. So it feels like this is a, a true sequel, not just like, oh, we threw the same name on a different game kind of thing. So yeah. Steph, have you played this one? No, you actually picked one. I haven't played. <laughs> oh, why don't you start playing yes! games, Steph? Gosh, ah, you can play more games. I need to All play right. more games. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes. It's yeah, this on one the is... list. <laughs> so how do, you, how do you feel about Lanterns? Have you played yeah, the base you? game Lanterns? Yeah. I mean, it's beautiful. I, I, it's not one I frequently play, but I enjoyed my time when I did play it. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, I, w I would definitely give it a shot if you can. It's it's new. I think it came out at Origins this year, but uh, it's it's really fun. We yeah. like it a lot. So one thing I'll say, though, because, Steph, I know you like things that are on the shorter and sweet side. This one takes about as long as Lanterns. Lanterns not a super long game. Lanterns yeah. Dice is, is about a 45-minute experience. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. again, for my money, I think it's ever so slightly deeper and heavier. Well, so, so that, that's interesting because... Yeah. Then, then it has the opportunity to be a better game, in my opinion. Yeah, I would, yeah, it may, and I, I would I would consider checking it out. It has the feel of, of Lanterns while doing something new. It's that familiar and the new kind of mixed yeah. up, and that uh, was good enough to make it our number seven. Yes, indeed. Awesome. So, let's get into uh, Board Game Geek and number six. All right, Board Game Geek, your number six is a game that we have played so much that we're so going to let Steph talk about it because we are just so... <laughs> Tired, tired of, of talking about this game that we've played basically called Quicks. basically invented Rolling Rights, yeah. <laughs> quicks is your number six. And uh, Steph, why don't, you, why don't you take it away? Um, Give us a you six know. Quicks. Um, so, yeah, you guys need to play this right, right soon. 
right? I, know. Like, I, don't know like, how, <laughs> I don't know how we have. I haven't had time. We've been doing a top 10. I can't play it right now. I've already been shopping on Target. This is the game my whole family will play. So that's like automatically a win because yeah, they don't really helps. play that many games. But my mom loves it. So that's like perfect, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's quick big points without the actual extra line to score for extra big points. So yeah, it's, quick, it's the same points. thing as what I've talked about earlier in the show. And it deserves to be higher on on this list like it is because it is so inviting to new players and it's so easy to teach and i think there's even an app which is awesome and and has the different different pads you can play so there's different ways to play the game like big points and stuff so yeah. it, it's just there's it's fun it's just fun yeah. and everybody loves it's just it fun i love That's it all the it's game needs fun. to be on a baseline just be fun <laughs> in yeah. some way or other and quicks does that quicks is a classic uh we have heard so many people that play it and said like it's really good you should play it it's like one sort of our best the... friends has it and plays it and somehow we've never played it together so we'll just have to corner him and, and... it's like Jesus a 15 Christ, minute man. game you can do I it know. i know <laughs> we only play heavy games all right uh, <laughs> we're deep games and all the of. and all these roller rights <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so that's that was, it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyway, Quix is the six for a board game geek, and I almost nice. felt the freestyle going coming up, but I'm not going to do, do it because uh, we do have it. a number six to do in the meantime. Our number six is let's make a bus route. Yeah. Do, do, let's make a what a great wholesome title. It Steph, is what great. is it's let's make a bus route? So this is one Mike you've yes. played. I actually haven't. Um, I played again so bad. <laughs> and so I I don't know much about this except I assume there is a bus somewhere. Nope. Well, you do control a bus route and okay. so yes there is. <laughs> but um so you will be flipping cards and then drawing your route depending on the card that's drawn, it will tell you what kind of picture you need to draw on the map. So you might go two spaces up or you could take a turn halfway through or you know, some sort of mechanic where you're building and ex continuing your bus route along this board. It, but the board is a collective board between all players and everybody's yeah. trying to make their bus routes on the same board. Which is fascinating to that me. That is the it's coolest awesome. part. It's awesome, yes. Yeah. So you are trying to make these stops and collect the old people and visit the, t the tourist spots and, and bring the college students to school and all these different things. And you're trying to do this as long alongside with everybody else who's also trying to do this. So you're trying to make your best route possible. Yeah, and they have the fun added thing of because you're on this communal board, there's other buses trying to do the same thing you are. And you are you get penalized if you go this over a same area that someone else has already been on basically it's like dude you keep going down 7th street the streets get super polluted <laughs> and so you have to try to like do all these things while not crossing paths with other people and and so just that i love this game for the idea that you know usually in a, a rolling right you have your own little player sheet or whatever and you're doing your thing and here it's like no 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 we're all in this together yeah. everyone wants to go to the tour spots so why, why do you get to go first? And so it just feels very much like a city and everyone's trying to like make their way. So if you like, cause one thing about a lot of roller rides is they tend to be relatively solitaire for the most part. Yes. I mean, even if they have like, oh, I took this dice, so you can't take it. It's still kind of your own thing. But does this one feel much, it feels like this is a much more interactive roll and ride. Is that true? I mean, I, again, I haven't played it. I'd so. say so, right? I'd say so just because you're trying to stay out of each other's way, ideally. I mean, it's it's not as interactive as you might think because you are still starting in different regions and trying to mm -hmm. complete possibly different routes because we are given hidden goals to try and get from point A to point B kind of thing. Okay. Right. So I just want to try to avoid other players. So okay. they okay. can be like, oh, she's coming up this way. I'm going to go this way and try and deroute me. But I, it's it's only if it's in your best interest does it make sense. Yeah. To do this. It may not be beneficial for you to do right. so. Right, but it's just, you know, it just is a fun switch from the normal. Yeah, yes. totally. Just kind of Agreed. being on that communal board. I just thought that everyone's on one board. That's yeah, just like fun. in Roll and Ride, that's just something around. that doesn't happen too often. And you each have your different color marker, so you know who's, yeah. you know, been going here first. I, so it's, we, this is a game of Roll and Rides that I probably want to play the most. Yeah. I'm mega jealous that you got to play it and I didn't and stuff. Yeah, yeah, so it's, I really want to play this one. If you can find it and get your hands on it, usually have to get it from uh, overseas and stuff. It's really fun. It's fun to check out. Uh, and that is Let's Make a Bus Route. See how I made the rhyme? I, I have a freestyle in me. I can <laughs> feel it. You got it. That's coming. <laughs> Woo! Later. Okay, but I'm not, I'm not going to let myself do it. We're going to go to number five instead by Board Game Geek. <laughs> All 
All right, so your number five is roll through the ages, mm -hmm. the Bronze Age. This yeah. is like through the ages, sort the roll of. rice. They took a massive giant game, <gasps> like so huge with so much like <laughs> upkeep and all this stuff, and it made it a little roll right. And we actually played this one. Yeah. Uh, we randomly played this one at Game House, which is a local game cafe yeah. here in Los Angeles. And it was really, really fun. I actually liked it quite a bit. Yeah, you're rolling dice and basically um, sliding a little markers up, you know, for your food and different resources. Mm -hmm. uh, and then based on those things, you can, you know, build the wonders and stuff. So it feels very much like a, a in a weird way, like through the ages, but very <laughs> reduced down. Just as small as you could possibly get it. It's a but it was cool. Well, yeah. I enjoyed it. Have you played a uh, roll through the ages, Steph? Yep, I played both the Bronze and Iron Ages. I do like Iron Age a little bit more. They are okay. longer games, and you do get to build up. The one thing that's kind of a bummer is that when you roll dice, you're not really interacting with other players, so you're just kind of waiting for players to finish their turn before you get to go again. Yeah, um, that's true. So that's why it's a little bit longer, um, but you do get that light, light, light sieve building aspect, which is really cool. And and that's you have you guys element. played Era Medieval Age, the new game? Yes, yes. And, and I was going to so say, that's... Era feels exactly like this. Well, that's yes. because it's the next like age of this game, right? So they're, this is, yeah. they're 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 taking this concept and bringing a, you know this whole new design yeah. game like Era. So we'll, we'll because, probably be seeing more of it. <laughs> yeah, for yeah, sure. And one that. thing that like we talked about, uh, we did a top 10 list about this recently. And we we're like, it's interesting because now the roll and writes are getting bigger. Like era is really just a roll and write, except for it's a roll and write, yeah. it's a roll and build. But you could just be drawing in buildings and it would be basically the same the thing. The same thing, so, yeah. Yeah, same yeah. Thing, like, something like Tiny Towns <laughs> is just a roll and write or a flip and fill, if that's what you want to call yeah, it. Exactly. But it's like, instead you have actually wooden buildings. But like, it's really just a roll and write, except for now they're getting bigger and longer and have a higher production value, which I'm actually totally I'm cool fine with. with. Yeah. yeah, me too. I like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we have Tiny Towns and Air, and love both of them. So, uh, so yeah, it's a it's a cool evolution that this genre is getting. Yeah, it's it's building all the time, uh, and so it's cool to see like an older one or older, you know. Uh, yeah, this is probably one of the the one that almost led the way for roller mm -hmm. rides, except for like Yahtzee, of course. But like, yeah, sure, of course, right? But, like know, this one forget. was like, oh, people really like these deeper roller yeah. rides. Let's give them more in this genre. I think that's totally. So that's cool. I'm All here right. for it. I'm here for it. Yes, indeed. So that was your number five. Let's get into our number five. So the number five from us is Welcome to Dino World. See what I did there? Ah. Welcome to <laughs> making appearances probably later on this list. Welcome to Dino World is uh, sort of a, 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 a roll and write the Jurassic Park dinosaur island thing where you're you're yeah, you're sure. running a, a dinosaur themed amusement park with actual dinosaurs and things yeah. and so based on uh dice you roll uh sometimes the higher number of dice and lower number of dice are going to give you access to different things one thing of course you can do is put dinosaurs in your park and they um each are going to have different size pens and um you know bigger dinosaurs need bigger space and you can decide you know how you use that space but it has to take a basically an X amount of squares. But it doesn't have to be like an actual rectangle. Yeah. It could be like some big squiggly pen if you, you want to try to be efficient with your space. So this game is is fun. It's um, a bigger for a roll and write. Um, this is heavier for a roll and write. It really is. There's, there's a, a lot it's of stuff to do. Very, very thinky because again, you're only rolling out three dice and the dice are normal D6s there. They just yeah. have pips. And again, the pips on there determine what you want. So if you want to build a facility, uh, you need to use either a five, a four, a five, or a six. Certain things will take two, three, or four. Right. And so you have to take these three dice and be like, okay, what do I want to build? Where do I want to build it in my pen? How do I want to do everything? And then on top of that, in both modes, you always have to build generators, but in danger mode, your generators can fail, yeah. which means you then can have your dinosaurs escape and then you lose the points for those dinosaurs. Yeah. And so it gets, it's very, very difficult. And then on top of that, in between each person, each two people, there are three visitors. The three visitors will want certain things. Like this visitor wants to see four Brachiosauruses. So if you have four Brachiosauruses in your pen, you get to claim that visitor. But if Mike gets it before I do, he gets the visitor and yeah. I don't. So you're also in a race to try to collect these visitors while managing everything else. And it's- Basically there's a lot going on. It's pretty it's pretty involved and, yeah. and we like it quite a bit it's very very fun steph have you played this one? Oh my goodness yes i just like drawing the little dinosaurs i know they're so <laughs> cute on top of it all I you get, get to, to draw, draw little dinosaurs. adorable little dinos 
and they're very adorable. The little examples they so give you are cute. super cute. So no, cute. but there is a ton of replay here because all of the buildings that you see, you're only seeing two or three or something, and, and yeah, there's so two. many. Yeah. So you can shuffle, and it's going to be totally different what you're going for each game. So I think that's like really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's super cool. The replayability is is pretty darn high, because yeah. um, even if you're playing the exact same thing, just with the way the dice roll out and the visitors you get, yeah. there's a ton of visitors. It's just, yeah, it's the replayability is is pretty darn high. But again, it's it's a bit of a heavier one, so this is it's a little bit longer, and so you gotta be ready for a more involved one. This isn't quite so. It's like, oh, we're just gonna do this, do this. Like this one, you're like. Oh my god, everyone's gonna die if I don't do my generators <laughs> right. Oh gosh. Yeah, you just so. need to roll well when it comes to the danger checks. There, yeah, really well. <laughs> roll low and have a lot of security. Yeah, exactly. the best. Yeah. But it is very, very fun. Uh, so that is our number five, right? Bam, number Excellent. five. Let's move on to number four from Board Game Geek. So we actually have crossover, which you know will happen kind of the list, but we have crossover on the exact same number. True crossover. What? Both of our number four is twice as clever, or dop it so clever. Dop it so clever. I, I don't, don't like know. this trend to, to, to everyone saying them in English now. Yeah. I like saying dop it so clever. It's more fun. It's more fun. It's more fun indeed. So that is our uh, number four collective. So we'll just talk about them all right yeah. here. So Steph, tell us about dop it so clever, or twice as clever. So. For me, I really liked Gone Chunk Clever. I think it offered a lot of cool, interesting ideas, and you get all these big combos with the dice you're rolling, but Doppel just brings it to that next level. Um, there is n new ways to use the dice, so the whole map, the whole board is different than Gone Chunk Clever. You are still rolling six dice, and then you will be using these dice you roll and then use and roll and use and roll and use and then the leftover dice everybody else will get to choose from. So you want to make sure you leave them with really not great stuff. <laughs> um, so these dice that you're using are you're going to be filling in these different bubbles on this board. Every section will score depending on whatever it's scoring for. But then you score foxes depending on how many foxes you get equal to the lowest scoring region that you've done. So you want to try and keep everything balanced to get all the most points possible as possible. Yeah, it's it's the classic like you want you need to do everything. You need, you need to you really you need do. to do it all. And you can't. <laughs> yeah, you in can't. general, I, I love that concept in games where whatever your lowest region or your lowest score is, that's your score because yeah. I I find that interesting because then you could just be like you have to do everything. I think that's nice. Yeah, those foxes are really important for getting high scores like it, 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 a lot of times it's make or break on the fox. If you do yeah. all one area, that's cool and can get you a decent amount of points, but you've got to balance. And of course, you know, the dice are are what they are and someone might Take the stuff you need yeah. and want, and and you're left over with you know this stuff and the, the the silver plate or whatever, yeah. and uh, <laughs> just kind of stuck. I will say though, and I'm gonna go against my other two co-hosts here. I cannot stand these games. What? Uh, Come on, man. Gone, Sean Clever, Dawson Clever are so boring. Yes, they I, are. They're but they're boring fun. on paper. They're boring in the app. I don't care what everybody says. They're horrible. <laughs> I, I I just they're so. <laughs> Boring. Oh my gosh. I don't understand how anyone plays these games. Oh I'm God. sorry. I, I'll agree with you to a point because <laughs> I have no interest in playing Doppelt or Gone So Clever or Twice as Clever or That's So Clever on paper ever again. I just want to play them in the app. I think they're perfect for an I app. Love I think it's an the app, app. game. So, yeah, so they make it so quick and easy, and they are boring. But I think the boringness, Nick, is the, is the elegance. That's that. To, you can that's see the mechanics. The, mechanics. the mechanism the boringness is, hard at work. is the elegance. That it's because it allows you to focus on the combos. It's because he's bad at it. He can't. He doesn't care. I am bad at it. That is part of it. <laughs> I am at. Although the one time I played it in physical form, I freaking crushed. Yeah, so you did. I'm you not did. that bad. So you just retired. I just I don't know. I've never I've never understood this. I, I played the physical form. Gone on clever was kind of like okay. That, uh, whatever, mm -hmm. and then I've got in the app because I was like, this feels more like an app game anyway. And then I was somehow more bored, and so I just and I tried Doppel somehow more bored, and so I just yeah, these games are not, not for me you. personally. Yeah. They're just that's not. Fine. They're just not. That's you know? fine. But that's why we're the three amigos. We don't always agree. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. We're not the three agrios. <laughs> we're the three amigos. Let's move on. <laughs> All right, we're going to number three from Board Game Geek right now. Excellent. <laughs> Alrighty, Board Game Geek, your number three is 
Railroad Inc. Deep Blue <laughs> Edition. Deep Blue. I guess people like blue better. They um. do. I so the difference between blue and I think red, you have the lava and then like a meteor can hit. Blue edition, you happening. can the little expansion is lakes and rivers. That's yes. the difference. Other than that, the two games are exactly the same. Right. Because the have, base game that you're playing most of the part is, is identical and you it's can identical. combine them freely because they're the same. It's just the expansion. And this that with change. BGG ranking can get kind of weird when you have two games that are more or less exactly the same, yeah. but they're technically two different games. And so they have two different pages, but Railroad Inc. is a very well liked game for the most part. So it's good both show up on the list. Twice. You know, yeah. yeah. That's something it shows. It's like, like for the wild, like the new through the ages and the old through the ages were <laughs> both like, in like the top 10 for BGG. Yeah. So it's like, one. you know, get rid of the other one, yeah. and these things happen, you know, there's like seven different viticultures, you yeah. know, so yeah. it's like, it gets confusing, you know, it's so, so yes, we've already talked about um, Railroad Inc. Uh, it's fantastic. We like it quite a bit. We have the blue version. Mostly, it's, mostly it's because of the color. Choose either one. They're both wonderful. And They're are there two wonderful. more? I thought, I thought I heard there no, was that two. No, that was a... Oh, that was a rumor? Uh, April Fool's. Oh, oh was I was really excited. excited. There's pink and green. I was really excited. Thank you. Yeah. You know, they so, did. They look so legit. <laughs> you want pink it to put like cherry blossoms or something? That'd be so cool. I'm just saying oh, you could do it. But never mind. Anyway. So Railroad Inc., we won't go into it too much more because we already talked about it, but it is honestly but get a really blue. Good game. Obviously and it's get pretty. Blue. It's Obviously get red. The people are right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about that. It's because you're the red player. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. What about All right. It? Red versus blue. <laughs> Eternal enemies. Uh, but that is Railroad Inc. And number three. And uh, let's get into uh, the three amigos. Three amigos, number three. Fun. So our and number three is welcome to this time that's it. No dinos. Your new neighborhood. It's just dot, the suburbs dot, this dot. time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dot, welcome dot, to. Dot. We haven't built it yet, so we don't know. We Whatever don't know immature name you name your neighborhood, because yes. we all name our neighborhoods really. That dumb is stuff. the start of it. Is that you can name your neighborhood whatever you want, yes. uh, and so have fun with that. So in this game, you are building out a suburb. Mm -hmm. You're building out three different streets. Uh, and you're putting uh, houses and you're building houses. And so the main thing that you need to do is you gotta number the houses. We must have addresses. We live in a, in a place of order here. Um, and so you, need, you are flipping over cards that will present to you three options of numbers that you can then put onto your street. So the rule is with that is your streets, each street is separate. Um, the numbers must go in ascending order. They don't necessarily have to go one, two, three, four, but they have to go up each time. It goes one, three, four, five, seven, because real addresses don't really make sense. They just randomly jump sometimes. So you have to do that. You're making three nice orderly streets, and then you're presented with opportunities to improve your neighborhood. So Steph, do you like Welcome To? Is this one? Because oh, yeah. for me, I love this because the theme, it is bigger and deeper, so I love it for that reason. Oh yeah, and it's really just, it's easy to teach and play, and it's, Everybody's doing their own thing. You don't have to worry. I like multiplayer solitaire games, so this is one that really like anybody can play with you, any number of people, which yeah. is great. Um, Absolutely. And so and there's also all these like new expansions that are coming out now, yeah. which are awesome because it adds just enough rules where you can still teach the game to somebody and include these new rules because it's Absolutely. not much, but it's it's something new and fresh and and I like that. I, I like what they're doing here. It's it's really good. Yeah, yeah, for a yeah. game like Welcome To, you'd want that with an expansion that just adds like a nice little, it's just it's just a little bit of, of flavor, uh, but it doesn't like rewrite everything. So you can do things like now you have, uh, it's Christmas time, you're trying to put decorations up, or it's Halloween, Easter eggs. and there's goose, yeah. and yeah. Easter egg, yeah. It's just like, I love that, and it creates the, the boards are really pretty, and, and it like you said, it just, it just kind of refreshes all of it mm -hmm. while keeping like, it it's still accessible oh, yeah. to people. Yeah, it's really great. It's it's hard, like the good roll right. It, it, it gets it brutal. gets rough, but it's it's very very fun, and it's and it's nice because again, like we said, you have the three numbers of addresses out, but you only choose one, so mm -hmm. it's not like you're completely stuck with whatever. Yeah, you now, if you options. get three bad options, you just got three bad options. Like, what are you gonna do? Mm -hmm. But it's not like you got one shot, and like you're just like, oh well. Okay, cool, this is fun. And so that's very, very nice. And then how you use the powers, like do I put it in a park, do I put it in a pool, whatever, that just gets like, oh, what do I go for, what do I go for? And it, it's it's so very, very good. Yeah, yeah. definitely give Welcome To a try uh, if you haven't already. It's I, I don't think we're alone in thinking that game is great. I don't think so. Uh, but uh, that is our number three. So let's get into Board Game Geeks number two. So you're number two, we kind of touched on a little bit because they are very similar, and that is That's So Clever, or Gonchon Clever, as it came out as. Um, the only way I game acknowledge it. It's still terrible. 
And so <laughs> we can just move terrible. on move on to the next one. Well, right? here's the thing. It, it we paved, all agree. It paved the way for twice as clever. It's <laughs> only half as clever as that game. But it's still the one where you're yeah, trying to do combinations and you're rolling out the dice and colors and each color has a different way that it scores. And like again, for my money, Steph, I think you're with me. Like on the app, I played, I don't know, a lot. 400, 500 games of it. Yeah. Like, because you can play them quick. I mean, I mean you and I've every my... other person on the planet. I mean, on Twitter and everything, there was like, so we literally in our it. Discord channel have a channel that's just Gonchon Clever scores because everyone's like, I got 312. I and think yeah. I was like, <laughs> part of his success is that they put the whole thing like, do you want to post your score? And people were like, yeah, I got 300. I'm like, how do you get into 300? It's like, get on my level, you know? It was perfect. <laughs> Perfect for the internet. I like how you picked 312 because that's my number. I, I know you probably didn't know that, but it's funny that you said it. Is that right? Cool. That's, that's my awesome. number. Somewhere it's in here. That's awesome. Uh, that's and random. that's so clever. That's awesome. I love it. And that's so clever or gone shown clever is the number two. There's one greater uh, ranked game on, from you, you, the folks at Board Game Geek. Indeed. But we got a number two. We got a number two. Let's talk about our number two. Let's get into it. Two is cartographers. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. I love this game so much. <laughs> it's so good. It is a flip and write, draw, create your maps game where we use roll and write as an umbrella term. Uh, it, it is, it really for is. For all of these games. Flip and fills, <laughs> draw and draws, yeah. whatever you want. Roll and writes means everything. everything. It's all of it. So what what I like is that they took a very simple mechanic you would find in Isle of Sky where you have these goals for the game. And you only use two goals each season. And so you know what to plan for for the game. And every you know everything's going to score twice. So you're like, okay, that will be at the end of the game. Maybe I'll focus on the start of the game stuff now and then worry about the end of the game stuff later. But you are using these cards that we're flipping to fill in your map and create this awesome terrain and land. So it meets all these amazing requirements for your goals to score as best you can. Now we have to watch out because there are monsters that come up and the player to either side of you, one of them, will be drawing on your map these monsters to try and ruin your day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you don't enclose those monsters, you start losing points. And I like that, you know, uh, it's set in the same world as uh, role player and lockup uh, that Thunderworks has kind of created. And so I like that it has a kind of fantastical element. First of all, mm -hmm. you're making a map. You're making a Tolkien-esque map. Yeah. And so, of course, you got to have monsters roaming around yeah. and stuff. And, like, and, and your friends get to mess you up in that regard. Uh, it's so satisfying. Like, it, you know, we always knew that making maps was just like, uh, it was just a nonstop adrenaline rush. It's and fun. And now you have a game that shows how fun it is to be a cartographer. Finally. It's wild, oh, man. It's the only theme we've been missing in board games. It's a wild time. It is, <laughs> it's great. And, I, and, and as, as Stephanie said, it's got the Isle of Sky mechanic where yes. you know each time only two of the, the scoring opportunities are present. Yes. So it'd be like A and B are scoring in the first round. But then the next season, B and C are scoring, then C and D, and then D and A again. And come back around. So yeah. it's interesting. You're like, okay, this is going to score, but it's also going to score next round. So I need to keep focusing on it. And then A, you kind of need to focus on the whole game because by the time you're in winter, it's going to score again. Yeah. So you have and this cool ramp up effect as the game goes because you've been working on maybe this one area for several rounds now. Yeah. And now it's time to score it. So those those later rounds... You know, you can pull off some yeah. pretty big stuff. It's so good. It is so oh, much fun. So we had high hopes for it, and then we got it and played it, and we were just like, wow. Yeah. Like, yeah. wow, this is good. And do it's yourself so a good. favor. And get, get pencils. Get, get colored pencils, yeah. pens, crayons, whatever. Markers. Like, get everything. it colorful. It's so <laughs> it's really, fun. Yeah, it, it's oh. way better uh, when it gets colorful. So like that. cool. Yeah, Cartographers is outstanding. It really is. It's new, and it's already right there. Like, it's, it, yeah, I don't know. It, it's, it's so good. That's all yeah. I can say. So anyway. good. All right, so let's get into number one from Board Game Geek, because we still have one more better we do. than Cartographers for now. All right, so now on to BGG's number one. You, the people, Greg. Some guy named Greg is going to be very confused this <laughs> I didn't time. vote on these games. Like, I don't even like rolling rights. Um, <laughs> And so uh, we talked about it a little bit ago, and that is Welcome To. You yes, all we chose did. Welcome To as your number one. It's pretty it's, good. It's great. It's legitimately it's great. Good. You know, it's just different and it's fun. Mm -hmm. And I get, I really I get pulled into it. the thematics of the game. Like, yeah. I do want to have like a lot of pools in my neighborhood. We're gonna have a fun neighborhood, guys. We're gonna have a good you know? parties yeah. all the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's it, Welcome To is outstanding. And do yourself a favor and get at least one or two of the expansions. Like, what's your favorite expansion, Steph? Since we've already talked yeah, about what's your like, favorite the base mode. Game? I don't like zombies, so that's definitely not it. 
Okay, <laughs> no bad. There's a zombie one. No zombies. Um, I think I like the Easter egg ones and I like the Christmas ones. I just like having the pretty Christmas boards. Christmas where is that? But um, the yeah. Easter ones, you're trying to get like eights and sixes to get extra like egg shaped features on your board. So that's kind of fun. That's cool. Um, okay. I would just ha- be happy to play any during the holiday at Senate because that's just fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're all Christmas. All about Christmas, for sure. <laughs> so uh, welcome to is number one, at least for now. Uh, Excellent. From Board Game Geek. Indeed. Well, we got a number one that I think is a little bit better. Totally. <laughs> So our number one from the Three Amigos is Fleet, the dice oh, game. It's so good. Oh. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Oh my gosh. We it's love so good, it so guys. much. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. It's stupid. Like, oh my gosh. It's much so like good. Cartographers gives you uh, a board game experience of the nonstop adrenaline rush of making maps. This gives you the nonstop adrenaline rush of just like fishing. Fishing. Uh, no, we're doing, we're like deadliest catch yeah, fishing, right? It's hardcore. Yeah, we're, we're like fighting swordfish with our bare hands. Yeah. yeah. So in Fleet, the dice game, you have basically ten rounds, and each round is in two halves. Yeah. There's a boat half. And there's a town half because you got to go back to town with your fish. So in the boat half, you're drafting out these boat dice, and they um, are going to be helping you get licenses for and launching different types of of uh, fishing boats that will all have kind of. Uh, the licenses will give you different abilities mm-hmm. and things that'll help you make more money, uh, give you some flexibility with dice, things like that. And then you flip over and do with a town half, which you can basically build up buildings, which will give you scoring opportunities uh, and, and help you out with these combos. Uh, you can go to a market to sell fish, again, make that money, which will help you with combos. This game is very much about combos. Yes. All the combos. Uh, Oh, it so is many combo combos. Yes. <laughs> combo tactastic, and it's so fun. Uh, and it's it's kind of a bigger game. And then every uh, even numbered round, two, four, six, eight, you do fishing, where all the f- fishing boats you have in the water will catch a fish, which are all worth a point. So there's all these different ways to score. Yeah. And it's just so fun. Steph, why do you like it so much? I and actually I love it for drafting dice. I love drafting mechanics in general. And so yes. you really want to pick optimally because the, if you're going if you're picking last for example everybody gets to choose a die before you but you're left with two dice choices and the last die that you leave behind everybody will get to use so exactly. you need to make sure that that die nobody else wants <laughs> yeah 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 you do have an opportunity to to you you know use it but that's the fun thing is that we all know there's gonna be this one floating die that everybody gets yeah. and so if i'm the first player like steph's last he gets to ultimately decide what's in the middle if i'm the first player i'm like i'm gonna take this but i really hope no one thinks about that die over yeah. there you see someone like grab it and you're like dang it no yeah. i don't want shrimp i want money you know uh and so yeah the whole the drafting uh makes it super interesting. I love that. Um, yeah, and then there's this, this kind of coin track. Like I said, you're getting money. You're never so spending money. Points. You're just acquiring it, and there's all these different stars along this track, and every time you get to a star, you just get to bubble in something anywhere. So you fill in anywhere you want, uh, yeah. which then allows you to get more coins, which then allows you to fill another star, which means you can bubble something else. Uh, and, then, <laughs> and then you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's so there's one point in every game where you just like I got like four stars and I did this thing it got me three more stars you just start just like going for days you're like it's I like need a minute I'm it's still like Dragon Ball Z and you're just like gathering power yeah. but it's fish yeah, instead you're, like, oh. you're just like ah, ah, ah. <laughs> just, <laughs> just some like well so that's the thing it, boat, it just, like, can be a bit overwhelming for new players because of all of these options and just yes. remembering everything so you just kind of have to help the new players out and be like oh did you do that this round make sure you get your extra star make sure you just if you're teaching the yes. game you just have to be aware of the surroundings and hopefully you know like the game well enough so you can do that yeah and yeah because you can really maximize if you if you are paying attention to everything you can do oh there's just so much i always forget like oh yeah i got an extra dollar because i have that license over there oh yeah okay i got this yep. extra thing because i have that license over there you just have to double triple check everything <laughs> yeah yeah at least <laughs> yeah and you should double triple check everything if you're a fisherman because safety Safe. Deadliest catch doesn't always go check well. Your Safety knots. first. Check your yeah. knots. Yep. Double check knots. Make sure that green horn has got his boots on. Uh, I don't know. So Fleet the Dice game is uh, is a big and bad roll and write. Be a friendly teacher. Make sure everyone else really knows everything they can do because yeah. then if you pull off those combos... It feels good. Oh, it feels real good. It's a very satisfying game to play. So it's good enough, I think. It's so satisfying. It made it our number one for the yeah. three Amigos. Absolutely. So just... Nick, you see, in, in Doppel, it's so clever and stuff, there's combos. Yeah, but what's up with Fleet, that? You don't like that. Combos. But there are 100% less fish. Yes, well, and that's a problem. 
Yeah. You could just there's pretend possible. the blue dice are fish. I mean, <laughs> that's go. a good point. Uh, so anyway, that is going to complete uh, our list. Indeed, that is our top ten roll and rights from us, the three amigos, versus your top ten roll and rights. You, the people uh, that rank your games on Board Game Geek, and if you don't like the list from Board Game Geek. Go ahead and rank your games and change the yep. list. You know, change you can the, you influence. Have the power. <laughs> you have the power to change the list in the future. Uh, you also have the power to help us decide what list we should tackle next uh, for the, our next top 10 versus 10. So yeah. if you uh, like this and want to see deck builders or something like that, put a comment in uh, this video and we'll consider doing that in the future. Indeed. Uh, we also want to say thank you to everyone who uh, puts up images on Board Game Geek, and thank you for allowing us to use your images as well um, because they help us fill out these videos, and they're very, very awesome. So if you got cool pictures of games, put them up on BGG. All Excellent. right, Steph, are we missing anything? I think we're good. All right, play well, more roll and rights. Here, here. <laughs> play, play more, more roll and rights. I don't want to see all the slander against roll and rights out there. They're fun fillers for everyone. Yes. Uh, so enjoy a roll and right or just. You can hate them. It's fine. Uh, but anyway, that's it for us. Uh, I have been Mike. I'm Nick. I'm Steph. And we are out of here. Bye. Bye. Bye.